Inmates, how is life behind bars? Come on at the same time, not these bars, but these bars. I don't know when I'm gonna be bringing this video to you, but I'm filming this literally two or three days after I did the last video where I put the R1250 GSA back together again. If you haven't seen that video, we'll stick it up here so you can click on the link and go and see that if that is more appropriate for you. So 18 months ago or so, I did a video stripping down an R1250 GS, one just like this behind me. I showed you me stripping it down screw by screw so you can see exactly what screw goes where. But I had a lot of people asking me to make another video of actually putting it back together again. So at the time I thought to myself, well, surely all you need to do is just watch the video in reverse if you like and just put the screws where you need to go. But I appreciate because of the feedback I've had, the one I did earlier this week, which was probably a couple of weeks ago on YouTube, but the one I did recently for the GSA, the amount of comments on there where it's really helped people out. I've I've read a couple of comments on there where someone said their bike had been in bits for months literally waiting for this video to come out so he can put his r1250 gs adventure back together again so we're going to do it again but this time on the gs so you're about to see me put this bike back together screw by screw showing you all the intricate bits on the panel where they all slide into each other so you can put your r1250 gs back together all by yourself. However, where are you around the end of June? Have you heard of Adventure Bike Rider Festival? I've been every year for the last few years. Obviously we missed a year during COVID, but I've been twice now as an attendee. It's a fantastic festival. If you are an adventure bike rider, you probably are because you're watching this video, then if you don't know about it, then I'll put a link down below to Adventure Bike Rider Festival. They have kindly offered me the opportunity to run one of their masterclasses. If you want to see me strip and put back together one of these bikes live on stage, well then I'm going to be there. I don't know the full details yet. The offer has only just been made to me. You really must go. Adventure Bike Rider Festival is fantastic. You basically go along with your tent. You can take a camper van and tow your bike if you want to, but the whole idea is you ride there, pitch up a tent. You're there for two or three days over a weekend. There's like a village in there. There's live music. There's stalls there so you can buy stuff. Everyone is an adventure bike rider. But then if you've really got the nerve, then you go out and you ride their trails. The trails are getting better and better every year. I took my R1250 GSA literally a couple of months after I would just done all that work to it, which some of you will remember, and I dropped it. It was only a one mile an hour drop, but a lot of people were saying, okay, you spent all that money on your bike, Steve, but are you actually gonna ride it off-road? I had to rise to the challenge and I took my, my bike out there on the trails. So I'm gonna be there in June. So it'd be great to see you guys, to have your support. If there's a few familiar faces who uh, are already subscribers who are there, that would be a fantastic support for me. It'd be great to see you there. So this guy's come in and had a couple of D3 spot driving lamps, which I've put on my special GS mount bar. So that is not a Denali mount bar, that is in a bike thing mount bar. Brings the lights in nice and close, so you'll notice that when we get this bike back together again, you'll see the lights are nicely just inside the fairing, which makes it look very OEM. So they're only available from me, and I'll put links down below so you can see where they are on the website. Or if you just go straight through to a bike thing bundles, select R1250 GS or R1200, GS and you'll see bundles there with that mount bar on offer. He's also had T3s fitted on the handguards, once again using an, a bike thing mount which I've had developed here where we can put the T3 actually onto the mount guard where it looks very OEM again. And on the back he's had a dual B6 all wired up. So he's asked me to configure the lights up where the front D3 spots are on one circuit. So when we indicate left and right they're just going to stay on. We've put the T3s onto two circuits and I've set them up in the software as turn signals with a DRL. So they will glow at 30 to 40 percent brightness all the time and then when we indicate left and right they will flash with the indicators. And then finally, the dual B6, that just takes that one circuit. And in the dual B6 kit, you get a little Y splitter. So you, you can channel that one circuit through to the two B6s on the back of the license plate. As you can see, I'm sure you agree, nice, tidy, finished the job. We have used the T3 harness for this, but because we haven't 
plugged in any white DRLs to the T3 harness. If you look at the way how the T3 harness is wired up, there's no ground going through the turn signal wires. So I've had to kind of like splice into one of the wires on the harness, not on the bike, just so we can get a ground going into those turn signals so it works. Now, I mentioned in the other video, but I appreciate some of you watching this haven't seen that because you've clicked on this video because it's specifically for the R1250 GS. And I showed on there that we use this pretty cool WD-40, I swear by it. We squirt this into every single connection when we're putting the system together because over the last couple of years, one of the things that I get through in emails is where people saying, for some reason, Steve, my lights are flickering, I don't know why. First port of call is make sure you haven't got modulation turned on inside your settings. When you look at your light pair on the software, you'll see you've got a lot of people sometimes just check everything, I saying that they want the lights to strobe, they want the lights to turn off when they indicate, they want it to do this, that and everything. And at the very bottom, they usually select modulation. They don't know what it means, but they just select it anyway. Modulation basically is another word for flickering, and you can actually adjust the intensity of that modulation in the settings as well. For some reason, some people like it around the world, where it because what you get is this flickering twinkle. To the majority of us, it looks like there's a fault in the wiring so because you get this flickering so just make sure you turn that off if your lights are still flickering what i found with my experiences there is micro condensation inside the plugs on the denali harnesses and that condensation can just appear just from different climates cold climate and even in a warm climate to sort this out all we do is squirt a load of this inside the plug so this is wd-40 you can use the conventional wd-40 which is like an all-purpose perfect it's not a lubricant a lot of people think wd-40 is a lubricant it's not it's more of a cleaner of anything this one here since i made the last video i'm actually stocking these now so i've got wd-40 on the website if you want to add that to your basket when you're buying your denali bundle from me just pop that in the basket at the last minute and we can get that dispatched in the box with your bundle as well if you're anything like me and you've got all your screws and you just chuck them in a pot and you have no idea which one goes where well then this video is gonna be perfect for you. Instead of showing you each screw in my hand as I'm putting it in the panel, I'm gonna talk you through the main screws and then I'm gonna give you a reference for them and then we'll I refer back to them as I'm putting the bike back together again so you know exactly which screw to pick up. So you've probably seen on your bike, you've got various different shapes and sizes. In my hand, you will see I've got seven different screws in my hand. One of, one of them isn't even a screw, it's a, a plastic pin for a rivet. So starting here, we've got the shoulderless Torx. So these are T25, so that's, that's, the T stands for Torx, so T25 screws. Now they are all slightly different. So we've got the long T25 screw, we've then got a medium length T25 screw, and then we've got a short T25 screw. Now the short one isn't too dissimilar to the medium length one, but when you put them side by side, you can see that they are different sizes. Then we've got a T25 with a short shoulder on it, and then the one next to that, that is a T30, and it's a little bit wider, the actual thread's wider. We've only got one of those, whereas with the other screws I've just spoken, we've got quite a few of those. Then we've got this little black screw here. There's only one of those as well. And then we've got two of these plastic pins. So without further ado, let's get this bike put back together again. Right, okay, so we're gonna first start off with putting the fuel tank back on. So I've got all the wiring in nicely in here tucked away so it's now ready for the tank to go straight on here in the last video i did on the gsa i forgot to put the carpet in but with the gs they don't do a carpet so that's the difference between the gs and the gsa gsa get a carpet but gs don't so we're just going to put the tank straight back onto here so on the back of the tank because you've already taken your bike apart you're probably familiar with this the fuel line goes in there then you've got the two plugs just here you can't get them wrong because they're polarized. You just push them all back in again. Also on here on the tank, you see these, these like C-shaped scoops. They go around these rubber bungs, these big rubber bungs down here. So that's how you guide it in. Once that's pushed in, it's in, it's, it's, it's in place. So there's one plug, two plug. So they're in there nicely. And now with the fuel, just get it nice and square and pop it on. 
you know when it's in because it clicks in nicely. You can't take it off unless you press the white button on the top again. Lean the top in first. And then if we get down and look down, you can see the bottom of the tank just sliding in down. And there it is, that is now in there. Now to make sure it definitely is in, what I'm now going to do is look down here and making sure that the threaded holes of the framework are in line with here. Now taking the seat bridge, I called it, I kept calling it a fork bridge in my last video for the GSA. This is the seat bridge. As you can see these, I just, I always leave these in here, but you can see them there. Okay. And then we just come over the top and we're guiding these down through those, those holes that are on the back of the tank. At the same time, plugging in the fuse holder there and putting anything in place that needs to be in place there. Right, and taking a T40 driver, I'm just going to screw these in. Pick up two of the, the shouldered T30s and they're going to go there. So that is now the seat bridge in place holding the tank on. And then we're going to put the fuel cap back on. So underneath here, it very, very rarely falls off, but you've got a rubber gasket going all the, all the way around here. If it comes off, just push it back on again. So just, just check it's definitely on okay. I'm just putting the fuel cap back together again. I think on the video I did where I stripped the GS down, I didn't actually remove the fuel cap. I think I unplugged the wiring at the front and pulled the wire out with it. Whereas now I, I, I tend to take it off and then put the screws to one side and just secure the fuel cap up behind the handlebar. So I didn't show these, these screws at the beginning, but this is obviously part of the fuel cap. They're all the same. They're all these T25 socket cap screws. Okay, I'm just bringing this Torx down to about seven or eight because you don't want this too tight. Then you've got the breather pipes. Each side you've got, should have two breather pipes. We're gonna pop these back onto the, the obvious nozzles that are coming off the side of the fuel cap. And then you've got a little clip here for the wire. It's not, I mentioned in the last video, it's an ignition wire, but it's basically, it's when the bike is turned on, it locks this down. So I'm just going to route that back in where it's slightly come adrift. There we go. So that's now locked as it should be. So just to test it, we're going to turn the ignition on. It should still be locked, but now we're going to turn it off and then that should open, which it does. Now coming around to this side of the bike, I don't think I showed me taking off this reservoir on the strip down video, but I do tend to take it out. It's just one screw. It just means we can get right through here and route the wire. So where I've got the, the D3 lights on, I've got the wire coming across the top behind the air intake. It's tucked up just over the top of the, well, it's nowhere near the radiator, but it's tucked up over the top of a mounting point above the radiator and it comes down there. There's a connection for the front D3 before it goes into the harness, which goes then back to the back of the bike. So I like to take that out because we get clean access to here and we can zip tie things to the framework if we need to when we've got more comprehensive installations with more stuff going on like cameras, etc. So I tend to just lodge that up there or get a zip tie and just tie that up whilst I'm working on the bike. So we're gonna bring this back down again and you've got like little star shaped sp sprocket. I don't know if that's the right word, like a nubbin, which goes through that hole at the top. And then the other hole is where the screw goes through. And on the back of here, you've got a bit which holds onto the hose. So you kind of like push the, the hose back on, push that in place. That's nicely in place. And then do you remember the, the black screw, the one black screw? and that's all nicely in place. Right, so now we've got the side panel. So this is the first panel to go on. 
and it should have been the last panel you took off as well. With this, we've got various different screws because usually you get the same screws all on the same panel, but this one you don't. Paying attention to the bottom, we've got the, the second part of the rivet at the very, very bottom of here. So if I pull that out, and that is the second part of the rivet where the pin goes through, and it goes through that hole there. So I'm going to push that through the hole, like so. And then we're going to offer this up, but the, that part of the rivet has to go through this hole just here behind the radiator. As, as you bring it up, you're basically, you've got one, two screw, screw holes at the top of here. Got one there and one there, and they line up with the screw holes they're on top of the tank. So I'm gonna take this top one here and line it up with that one there. At the same time, bringing this rivet through and popping it in that hole. Okay, so that is now in there. And I'm gonna pop the pin in there now as well. So that can't come out now because it's riveted in there, okay? These top two here are both the short shouldered T25s. That's held in there. So I've just grabbed another short shoulder T25 to put in the one at the bottom. Now don't tighten them up straight away. So that is still loose. That part's still loose there. We're now going to grab two short shoulderless T25s. Actually, I'm just going to show you something very quickly. Right, so if you see there, these are all the shoulderless screws and as you can see, there's the long ones and then to the left of the screen are the short ones. You see that medium sized one there? That is the medium one, so it's just a little bit longer. And you know what? If you don't get the right screw in, apart from those long ones, they are for a very special thing. If you don't get, if you get these in the wrong holes, it actually doesn't matter too much, don't worry about it. But I'm showing you how it should be, how it, how it came out of the factory like. So we're gonna grab two of these small ones. And what we're gonna do is gonna put one just in there. and one just up here. Right, so now they're in, we can now tighten these ones up. And there we go, so you've got four screws. So two shouldered, two short shoulderless screws there. So we're doing the exact same again for the other side. As you can see, I've got that part of the rivet already inside the panel. So we're gonna offer up the top part here to that screw thread just there. This comes down, pop that into the hole that's down here. Grab a plastic rivet, two short shoulder screws and two short shouldered screws. So the shoulder screw goes at the top into the tank. I haven't gone tight. And the shoulder screw down here. Pop in the plastic rivet. That's in. Now we've got the two short shoulderless screws. And one goes there, and the other one, oh, other one goes up here. Tighten them up. Okay, that's those panels on. Now we've got the front nose section to go on. Now you'll get different nose sections, two different nose sections, depending on, on, on which GS you've got, because you get some with a plastic beak on the front and some without. Sometimes you just have to undo two screws under here to take it off, Whereas with the GS uh, HP Rally, you have three screws. This is the trickier one. So if you've got a non-HP GS Rally, it's so much easier to get it on. It's not difficult to get this one on, it's just that as this slides up over the front of the bike, you've got to get that, you've got to get this plastic part here underneath this part here, but then these bits have to go on top of it. So you, basically that's got to slide, this part of the nose here has got to slide up inside there. Does that make sense? Now, when you look on site, when you look in here, can you see these rubber grommets? There's one there, and there's one there. Now, put a bit of grease, maybe a bit of WD-40 on them if you want to, just to make it easier. I just lick it with my fingers. And what we're gonna do is we're going to offer it up to the front of the bike. Now, on the front of the bike, so just here on both sides, you've got these prongs sticking out on the front of the bike. The rubber grommets have to go over that. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is literally hold it in my hand like this, 
and start guiding it over the top but underneath the, the turn signals. When we have it in this position, I need to then put my head under here to make sure that this bit is going where it needs to. So I'm coming under here, making sure it slots in between, like I showed you beforehand. Now I'm not gonna start pushing it on just yet because now those rubber grommets are getting very close to the pins. So I put my fingers, on, fingers underneath here, feeling for the grommets, making sure they line up to those pins which they are now, they're actually in them slightly, and I'm starting to push back with my thumbs, push back there. That now clips into place. And that is now in place. All I, all I need to do now is put screws up inside here. The three screws for this one are short shouldered T25s. But let me show you the grommets and the pins in place. So that's the, the pin going through that grommet there. And then over on this side, there's the pin going through the grommet there. And now we're just gonna put these three screws in here. So you've got one, two, and, th and three. It's incredibly hard doing this videoing and trying to point at things at the same time and messing with all the light alterations on here at the same time. Okay, so three short shoulders T25s. Okay, so now the nose is on and you, you know where it's on because it's nice and flush against here. It just sits just right. We're gonna put a screw in there and a screw in here. The screw that goes in here is a short shoulder T25. And then in the top here, one you have to be nice and careful with. Don't go mad with it because it's going straight on to the painted plastic of the bike. And this is a shoulderless, very important. You put a shoulderless short. So it's not the medium length one, it's the short shoulderless T25. If you put a shoulder one in there, you will break the panel. And then we do the same the other side. So the shoulder one at the top, and the shoulderless one just there. Now what we need to put on is the side panels which go around here and you'll notice how beautiful the mount is for the Denali D3s. So well, all the Denali pods will fit here beautifully. When this is on, it's just a lovely fit and finish just inside this air intake where the, rate, the air comes in for the rads. If anyone's saying, well, you're blocking in the air for the rads, well, you're not. It, it, there's no empirical evidence to say that this actually blocks in any airflow whatsoever. Okay, so for this one, if you look at the back of the panel that you've got, there's a little cutout just there. That little box, that little cutout box, sits straight onto these little prongs uh, that are on this top nose panel there. So all we need to do is to initially secure is to pop that little cutout over that so it pops on. So you line it all up. I've got my finger inside the box, removing it at the last minute so I know it's all in line. And now it's like this. I'm now gonna just pop it on. Have you listened for the pop? There we are, that's now on. So we've got one and we've got two on the front and these are short-shouldered T25s. That's those two on. There's another three to do on the inside, but we'll do those after we put the other side on first. So the same again. There it is on the inside, just there. There's the bit it goes over. Pop that over, offer it up. That's it. And when we know it's on nice and square, we just pop it on. Ready? That is now clicked into place. And the same as with the other side, we've got two T25s with shoulders. Right, so let's jack it up so I can show you exactly where the next are going. So I just need to play with the light settings on the camera. There we go. Who needs torches when you've got cool cameras? Right, so we've got a screw going in there. A screw going in, can you see just behind the D3? Just there, and a screw going just there. So one in there, one there, and one there. And it's the same both sides. 
So for all of these six screws that are going in, they are all those medium length T25s without shoulders. So medium length, shoulderless T25s. So we start with the ones up here. Now for, for these ones in here, you can either use a stubby screwdriver or what I use that I attach to my power driver is a, a complete right angle driver. These are really, really cool. I'm gonna try and see if I can source these if I get enough interest because they are a bit expensive, but they are quality tools that last you a lifetime, I would imagine, don't quote me on that. But I'm very, very impressed with my one. That's all of the screws there for the front of the bike. Let's lower it down. So now we've got that all on. Now we're putting on this side trim here. Now, if you look on the side here, we on on this part here, you've got a hole here, like a key shaped hole, and you've got another slot just there. So these have got to line up with these little nuggins. There's a new word for you, little nuggins on the back of this panel here. Now, sometimes people get put, are trying to put the wrong side on the wrong side. So if you take the one with the mesh, the perforated side to it, that is pointing upwards. It follows the contour of the tank just there. We've got to get those inside those holes first. So you have to pull it slightly back first and then you push it and it clicks into place. You then got two screws that go in here and there's two screws for there. They're the long, the very long shoulderless T25s. The same again for this side, it's identical. Little nuggins on the back. So that's almost in place. I've got it in the holes and then I just click forwards. There we go. Okay, and the, the two long shoulderless screws. Right, now for the tank top. With the tank top, you've kind of got to be quite forceful with it to the point where you, sometimes it feels like you're gonna break it. You've just gotta be confident with it. I wouldn't say force, more like being confident with it. But if you look inside, before you put it on, have a look inside what actually has to happen. You've got these little metal clips in here. You've got another metal clip there, and they're on both sides. Then you've got some little guide points here. So it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six things have got to clip into place before we can start screwing in around this area here. You've got three screws at the top and then, and then you've got three screws at the bottom where the seat bridge is. And then if we look on the tank itself, you can see where everything goes. So the top two clips I showed you sit on top of these plastic fins just there. The next two metal clips on the top piece pop into the gap just beneath and then the next two fins pop into the next gap underneath that. So you can get an idea of what's got to happen. It's kind of got, got to clip into place. And also you've got little white clips at the top on this panel which flick over the top of little plastic pieces on the inside of here as well. So there's quite a few things that have got to happen when it all goes on. So I'm getting the fuel cap in place to begin with. I'm not popping it down just yet, but we need to start clipping those bits in. So, did you hear that clip? That's already in that side. And as, as we come down, that's just clipped into place. That just clipped into place. That just clipped into place. And I'm running my fingers down here. It's already in because the, the, the seam is nice and flush. There's no gaps at all. And sometimes if things aren't aligned properly, then it can't pop in and you've got to take it off and have another go or maybe loosen the panel or something and try and realign it. But we did a really good job of putting this together. So it, it's, it's all gone together beautifully, which is fantastic. Right, so we're gonna go in at the back first of all. And these are shoulderless. They're actually a medium length shoulderless screw. Then you've got the two screws here. These are short-shouldered T25s. And one on the other side. And then we've got that really big, long T30, which goes straight down 
the middle at the front. So now we're going to put the top piece back on. Now, first of all, double check you haven't got any wires that are hanging over the top of the framework because when this goes down, it goes on tight. We don't want to trap any wires whatsoever. So let's now pop this on top. There we go, so that's nicely in place. So do you remember these bits that go in the back before you put the bolts in? These have got to go in first. Now they all look identical, don't they? They look, they look the same. Literally none of them are the same, all four are different. So you need to put these back into the respective places and you can't get it wrong. So we literally just guess it. So if I take this one here and put that there, that's beginner's luck. That's the same with the GSA. If I put that one there, that's again, beginner's luck. If I put that one there, oh my goodness me, look at that. that oh, I need to go to a casino right now. <laughs> because if you try and put that in there over there, it won't fit. It just, it just won't go at all. You can see it's a, a completely wrong fit. But they just fit inside there like that. If you try and get the front ones and the back ones, it, it won't even, it's like a huge step up going on there. So just pop that in place. Centralize over the holes. Looking at the, the bolts over here, I've got four bolts left over. Let me show you those. So you've got two short ones and you've got two long ones. And you've got the two long bushes, which obviously go with the long bolts. And you've got the two short bushes, which go with the short bolts. So the long ones go at the front. I'm just gonna put them in by hand to begin with. And there's the short ones at the back. So I'm not going to go all the way in, I'm just going to semi-tighten them up. Okay, now before I get my torque wrench out and give them a little tweak, it's very important to check that the seat mechanism still works. So we're looking at this bit here because I've just fitted new wires in here and they're gathered up around here and you've got the seat mechanism going across there. So when I do that, it's still working absolutely fine. So we know the seat's definitely going to release when we put the seat on. If you, if you check it too late, you'll find that you can't get the seat off. Right, and then we've got the grab rail at the back. Now I've actually left the bolts in this, so let me just take them out. Same principle with the rear tray. The long bolts go at the front and the short bolts go at the back. All right, so I'm actually gonna put the short bolts in because they're quite hard to get to. So they're, they're in there like that. I'm gonna put that over those holes at the back there. And if anyone's screaming at their screen saying, you forgot the bushes, that, that's on the GSA model. So if you watch the video where I put the GSA model back together again, you'll see there's two bushes that go in between the, the pillion grab rail and the rear tray. And now I'm just gonna give these a little tweak. These are all T40s by the way. the rear seat back on get the key out and double check we can definitely get that rear seat back off again yep and put the front seat on and again check we can get that off which we can okay Unfortunately, this customer, when the bike came to me, it wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> but when it came to me, the, the, the tags, the, the holes, the, the, the strap, which locates the battery here, were already broken. So um, unfortunately, I can't tie that back down. So little grommets behind here, put a bit of grease in there, just wet it. Because if you don't, you might end up pushing the grommet through 
as you put this back on, just in case none of you have done a battery cover. You've got a little pin there and a little pin just there. And they go inside the grommet at the bottom, grommet top right hand corner, and then you've got one screw at the top, which is a shouldered T25. Okay, that's a wrap in mates. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Until next time, stay safe behind the bars. Not these bars, but these bars. See you in the next video.